Okay, we're going to talk about the phrenic nerve and answer the questions, what is its origin and topography? What's its sensory and motor distribution? And what medical problems are associated with it? Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Morton, and I'm the noted anatomist. The phrenic nerve arises from the C3, 4, 5 spinal cord levels. And then its ventral rami gives rise to the C3, C4, and C5 components of the cervical plexus, but it forms its unique nerve of the phrenic nerve. Now, the phrenic nerve descends vertically on the anterior surface of the anterior scalene muscle, then courses between the subclavian artery and vein and the root of the neck. As it descends in the thorax, it'll pass anterior to the root of the lungs and then provide innervation to both hemidiaphragms bilaterally. But it also pierces the diaphragm, and on the right, it'll go through the caval hiatus with the inferior vena cava, and on the left, the left phrenic nerve pierces the um, central tendon of the diaphragm. Um, the phrenic is a mixed nerve, which means it has motor neurons that are going to innervate the skeletal diaphragm muscle, and the lower motor neuron cell bodies arise in the ventral horn gray matter of C3, 4, and 5, and then descend to innervate the diaphragm. The sensory neurons come from the parietal pleura and the parietal peritoneum, and uh, parts of them, and then ascend to go to the same C3, 4, 5 spinal cord levels. The difference is motor neurons are in the ventral root, sensory neurons are in the dorsal root, but they're all part of the same ventral rami and joining to become the phrenic nerve. And we kind of remember the levels because of this little memorable thing, C3, 4, and 5 keeps the diaphragm alive. Uh, the right phrenic nerve innervates the right hemidiaphragm, and the left phrenic nerve innervates the left hemidiaphragm. So when the action potentials spread down the phrenic nerves, it looks like this. So they both innervate their associated, or the, the right and left phrenic nerves innervate their associated hemidiaphragms when the diaphragm contracts. We'll do that again. As we see, during an active stage, when the phrenic nerve innervates the diaphragm, the diaphragm contracts, air comes in. When the diaphragm relaxes, air goes out. This is called negative pressure ventilation because the phrenic nerve innervates the diaphragm, and when the diaphragm contracts, it reduces intrapleural pressure, which then expands the lungs, and as the alveoli expand, the alveolar pressure is less than atmospheric pressure, and air moves in from the atmosphere into the lungs until alveolar and atmospheric pressure equalize. This is negative pressure ventilation. Now, why am I doing this with the phrenic nerve? All of this starts with that. The phrenic nerve has to innervate the diaphragm in its contraction of the diaphragm that causes negative pressure ventilation, which is how we breathe. So how about some injuries? So the phrenic nerve, if it's injured, just for example, left or right phrenic nerve can be injured. And just for this to show what happens, I'm going to say the right phrenic nerve is going to be injured which means the right hemidiaphragm is paralyzed and it can no longer contract and descend during inspiration. The left hemidiaphragm, it continues to function normally, so the right hemidiaphragm moves paradoxically upward as negative intrapleural pressure pulls it upward rather than allowing it to contract downward. Let's do that again in some pictures. If we then see what happens if the right phrenic nerve is injured, what we see is that contraction of the healthy hemidiaphragm creates the negative pressure in the thoracic cavity, like that. And it's the upward movement is called paradoxical movement because it's the opposite of what the diaphragm normally does during breathing. What about a cervical spinal cord injury at or above the C3, 4, 5 spinal cord level? This results in complete diaphragmatic paralysis. Um, and the patient then has, is dependent on a ventilator, positive pressure ventilation. And a spinal cord injury below C5 typically usually spares phrenic nerve function. The Christopher Reeve is a, a, an actor uh, that uh, I know is the, during my childhood because he was the Superman that I knew. And in 1995, Christopher Reeve was bucked off his horse and landed on his head and fractured the C1 and C2 vertebrae. Um, Here's a coronal section of the, of the upper neck and head and neck, and there's the spinal cord, and there's the C1 to C5 spinal cord levels, and he fractured C1 and C2 that then injured the spinal cord. So upper motor neurons from the cerebral cortex, as they descend to innervate the lower motor neurons in C3, 4, and 5, cannot because of the fracture bone severing and injuring the 
you know, C1, C2 spinal cord levels. Christopher Reeve became a paraplegic and had complete paralysis of his diaphragm. And as a result, he was on positive pressure ventilation the rest of his life, which means instead of diaphragm contracting and sucking air in, he was on a ventilator that pushed air in. This is why it's called positive pressure ventilation that pushes oxygen in, expanding his lungs and so oxygen can go into his blood supply. Now, sensory neurons. So um, the phrenic nerve receives somatic sensation. I say somatic because this means pain, temperature, touch, vibration, proprioception, just like our skin, except it's inside the body. Um, mediastinal, Mediastinal and diaphragmatic parietal pleura and diaphragmatic parietal peritoneum. Um, is what sensory nerves in the phrenic nerve. So there's mediastinal parietal pleura, a parietal pericardium as well. I just didn't show it. Um, then diaphragmatic parietal pleura and diaphragmatic parietal peritoneum. All of them send somatic sensation via the phrenic nerve. Um, we typically don't think of it that way though. The only time we think about it is when there's a problem, like here, when we've got some type of consolidation in the right lung, which then irritates the mediastinal parietal pleura. Therefore, the phrenic nerve transmits this pain sensation to the C3, 4, 5 spinal cord level. And the cervical plexus that the phrenic nerve is part of, uh, so the cervical plexus supplies the phrenic nerve and also the C3, C4, and C5 dermatomes. And so what happens is the brain interprets pain, instead of coming from the mediastinal parietal pleura, interprets it as coming from the shoulder because the brain is you is continually receive somatic sensation from our dermatomes, and in this case, C3, 4, and 5. And when it finally receives information from the mediastinal pleura via the phrenic nerve, it refers it. And that's why pneumonia thoracic, in the thoracic cavity or gallstones in the abdominal cavity can present with right shoulder pain. This happens on the left as well. So in case the spleen is ruptured in blood pools on the under surface of the diaphragm, that left diaphrag- diaphragmatic parietal pleura will refer pain to the left shoulder. And that, my friends, is the phrenic nerve in a nutshell.